Welcome back to the Listen Up Podcast, where we analyze a new album each week. I'm Jamie, and this week we've got me, Nick, Yo, and Jordan. <laughs> this week we're going to be taking a look at Southeastern by Jason Isbell, released in 2013, and it was picked by me, Jamie. Um, I chose this album because I love it, and I hold it near and dear to my heart. It is legitimately one of my favorite albums of all time. It is an exceptional um, album. And yeah, he just the the man puts on a clinic in songwriting. Um, he, Jordan, a little background because I'm sure you're you're unfamiliar with him and indeed, his work. Indeed, indeed, I am. Um, he started off with the Drive By Truckers, which are a like southern country adjacent like rock band. Um, and he joined them was with them that's where he started his like professional music career but then uh just like he he basically came in as like a 21 year old and tried to like drink the same amount as uh the other two lead members of the band who had been doing it for about 10 years at that point okay um so he developed a strong addiction uh, and wrestled with alcohol and drugs, and like he started to spiral a little bit, and then he he left that band, got a divorce from his wife, okay, uh, who I think was also a member of the Truckers. I think that's I how think we so. met her. Um, they split. He went to rehab on and off a couple of times, but then he finally sobered up in I think it was 2012, and then this album is the first one he released. After that, he when he left the Truckers. He had written some really good, some hits of theirs. Um, and then he'd made, I think this is his fourth solo album after departing from them. And the other one, this was the first one that really took off for his solo career. Um, and yeah, it's just a, so that's kind of the backstory of where this album came out of. It came out of wrestling with addiction and recovery. Um, and it's just uh, phenomenal. I love it. And so I, this is actually one of the ones I've been wanting. I think I said it last week, but this was one of the ones I literally had in mind when I picked the idea to y'all of starting this podcast. I was like, I, I'm going to talk about this. My dad loves this album. I know he's going to definitely check out this episode. Um, he's actually the one, yeah, because he's been a big Truckers fan and then was a subsequent Isbell fan um, yeah. and got me turned on to him as well. And I, I knew your dad was a huge drive by Truckers fan. <clears throat> Yeah, he's seen them, I think, once or... Well, I guess he's definitely seen them twice. Uh, but I think he said that's one of the loudest shows he's ever seen mm -hmm. was he saw them at Ziggy's back when it was still open. Oh, that's cool. And they were and they were right in front of, like, the four or, like, eight-foot-tall brick wall or whatever. So mm -hmm. they were literally right where all of the sound was <laughs> reverbing, and they were, like, 200 feet from the stage. Uh, yeah, he said he couldn't hear like the next day he like really thought it was going to be some sort of permanent <laughs> uh, like ringing. But he said after like a few days he was fine, <laughs> but he was nervous for like the next day. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we saw him a uh, couple summers ago, a few summers ago, whenever they toured with the Tedeschi trucks yeah. and Marcus King band. Um, Mar Marcus yeah. King band. Pre previous yeah, we, pod. Yeah, we band. talked about them. Uh, that episode was a little bit shorter than. <laughs> yeah, for, the normal forgot about that one. Yeah. Episode, but uh, <laughs> it was a good hour long discussion that uh, you guys heard it as a twelve minute discussion. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so Jordan, how did you? What was your reaction to your first uh, hearing of this album? Then, as someone who hadn't heard any of it at all. Um. So, it was a little more folk. I, actually, I, I like I was not mm -hmm. like folky, but like a little more. Uh, oh, what's the word? 
It's, okay, well, one, it, it wasn't really my taste of music, to be no. honest. I mean, it's, it's a country album. Yes, yes. It's an Americana country yes. album. Yes, yeah. um, which I'm surprised you guys... Actually, I'm not surprised Nick likes it so much. Jamie, I didn't know you liked really? this kind a ton, a ton, you know? But, uh... Yeah, no, I like I, I this is this is right up my alley. This shit, this Damn. Tyler Childers, some the strange, range, stuff, some of it. The yeah. range on your uh, music taste, it's, I guess both. It, of it is wide. It is a wide variety. <laughs> um, it, it wasn't. It wasn't my favorite, to be honest. Um, but again, I didn't really have any expectations. I think it was a little too slow for me. Like I've said before, um, right? It didn't really have the, the the only thing that threw me off, actually, like actually was like that one explicit song i did i wasn't even looking at the song tracks like the first i was just kind of like trying to listen through it mm-hmm. and when he started like i heard like the f word and i was like what i was like did he just say that and like oh you're talking about elephant yeah, yeah. i was like yeah dude like doesn't that catch you out like maybe since you guys have heard it a ton it doesn't <laughs> but like the first... no it does the first time you listen okay. to it, you're like whoa yeah like, i i showed that song to to someone that jamie and i work with last night for the first time and uh, i i I kind of tried to explain it at first, and I, I was like, you know, it kind of took me off guard the first time I listened to the song that he just comes out and like says the f word. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And I was like, I was like, not for the purpose that he cusses, but, and I kept trying to struggle, struggle to explain it, and I was like, yeah. you know what, just listen to it, and you'll have the same experience I did, and and I'll see how you like it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, man, that. Uh... It hurts. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> that song. That, that, that's that. that's one of the like when I th- natively think of sad songs, I I typically tend to think of like relationship sad songs, but that's one of the saddest situational, that's just, just sad, like saddest yeah. overall we'll, songs we'll I've ever heard. We'll uh, we'll dive into it for sure, but yeah, that's yeah that yeah Jordan. Last week you um. We were talking about what, uh, like, we kind of related to, and you talked about how Nick likes heartbreak music, and you asked me if I like, rela- like, uh, resonate with sad music. And the whole time I'm thinking, bro, next week's album <laughs> would be like a perfect example of like proof that I do. True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, because there's I, how how much did you? So you said you didn't. You just tried to listen to it at first. Did you ever like really look at the lyrics of the songs? Uh, some of them. Some of them I did. Yeah, the ones the ones that interest me a little bit more, and I'll, I'll get that. Uh, one, but some of them, I I didn't look over every single lyric. Yeah, and that's there there of uh, uh, the songs like you know Stockholm, flying over water. There's some interesting stuff there, but those are those you don't really. I wouldn't say you necessarily gain too much from like really delving in, but some of them like especially like Elephant. Yeah, yeah. is like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if that's – we can go ahead and get into some specifics then because I feel like we're gonna, that's going to probably be a pretty long segment. This episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I have two and some change pages written. Yeah, yeah. you guys wrote a lot for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is – I've had eight, seven years, probably like five or six years of like legitimately like rigorously listening to this. So I've – you know, I've had time to dissect it apart from just like this past week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I no, yeah, I love yeah. Jason Isbell, and I I love basically every album that. Like, I I've listened to all of his albums now, and every album from this one on, I've listened to probably at least like ten times, I'd say. But yeah, but this one I listen to a little more sparingly. Not because every song is sad, but just because the sad songs in it are are so sad and are so emotional. Very sad. It's it's hard. For, it, yeah. Even me enjoying sad music, it's hard for me to <laughs> to put myself in that vulnerable of a state. Ah, uh, see, I'll throw it on and belt it out. Yeah, I'm here for it. That, that's how I was this week when I was when I was really listening to it and trying to yeah. dig into the lyrics. Like I never like, had before. I'll, I'll listen to this kind of stuff like doing homework. It's impressive. I, I applaud you. Jamie's tears it's, just hit his paper. Is my uh my my like go to for a while my go to homework playlist. Uh, after I left like the Beethoven hits on Spotify, uh, I I listened to the, just this is Jason Isbell. That would be my like go to. I got you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm real quick before we get into specifics. I'm just I'm convinced that this man cannot make a bad album. <laughs> like, 
Really? Even, yeah, I mean, even in his solo ones, like, the ones before this were Sirens of the Ditch, Here We Rest, and I think Sirens of the Ditch was his first solo album. I think so. And then there was an album after that called Jason Isbell and the 400 Unit. It was like a, that's like the band. I mean, it's not like, and there are some good songs on those, but it's like, and not every song is a hit on the albums. I just, but overall, I wouldn't give any of them less than like a seven <laughs> because there's like, there's great songs on every single one. Like even back to Sirens of the Ditch actually has a lot of, I really enjoy them. Um, but specifically like Dress Blues, very sad song. Oh my very God. Very good that song. You. Very, very good very song. Good. Very sad. Uh, Chicago Promenade, Hurricanes and Hand Grenades. Shotgun Wedding, The Devil Is My Running Mate, The Magician. Wait, who does... Actually, who does, all of those songs are who does I, I really Wedding liked... Um, again? Who what? Who does Shotgun Wedding again? Jason Isbell, that's... I feel like I've oh, heard you, that song before. You probably haven't heard this one. Are you thinking of White Wedding by Billy Idol? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, know the one. No, I know White Wedding is like Sunday for a White Wedding. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Fuck it. Never mind. I would be surprised. If, I mean, I'll play. I can play it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, would be surprised okay. I probably haven't heard uh, it. I'm yeah, I had never heard. listened to Sirens of the Ditch before this week, and um, yeah. and uh, I really, I really enjoyed Hurricanes and Hand Grenades, and like mm-hmm. basically every other song on that album was also good. But that that was one I of my really favorites. Love, uh, that one in Dress Blues. Yeah. Dress blues, man, that's good. Um, but yeah, and then like the next one, which is the band self titled Seven Mile Island, Cigarettes and Wine, uh, Street. I love Street Lights. That's an excellent song. Um, and that one's probably the weakest of them, but I would still like enjoy listening to it. Here we rest. Codeine's a great song. Codeine's really good. Go it alone. Alabama Pines. Okay. Hard on a string. Daisy May. Like it's just, literally every album. I like half the songs on it. I'm like, those are great songs. And the other ones I still enjoy listening to. So like, I cannot sing this man's praises enough. I really can't. I, I uh-huh. love his music so much. Interesting. Uh, his next album after this one won like best. It got like album of the year. Dang. In, uh, I thought it got like album of the year, like the Americana awards or some, something like that. Is that the um, something more than free? Something more than free. Yeah. yeah, which is a phenomenal song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love it. But I think this was the first. That was the the album after this. That's the first one where he got mo- like more than just like country recognition. He got like I think he debuted really highly on like rock and folk and country mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, but it's a phenomenal album. I remember Children of Children. Oh. Chef's kid. <laughs> the the first time the first time I ever heard a Jason Isbell song, I saw him perform Twenty Four Frames on Conan mm-hmm. when I was younger. Yeah, I think that was probably the. I think it was also the lead single. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that was that was probably the biggest one. That one, if it takes a lifetime, and uh, something more than free, I think were the biggest ones. Yeah. But that one, like all the songs are good. Mm-hmm. That one and this one, all the songs are good. And that was the the one time I've seen him. I was going to see him at Bonnaroo, and I was so hyped. But the one time I saw him in concert was for the Something More Than Free tour. Okay, um, and that was awesome. But now I know his catalog so much better. I would get so much more out of the concert again. That's why I was so excited. But say, Levy, he's also hilarious on Twitter. <laughs> he is very just throwing it out there. Twitter. I love his social media presence. Jason Isbell. Um, or mm-hmm. Isabel? Yeah. He's dude, he's so funny. Interesting. He he actually he had a meme that like was a legitimate meme. Did you ever hear about the like Let me hit it with hit feral it. hogs yeah. in Arkansas? Maybe uh maybe. Yeah, it was it was a couple years ago. Oh yeah, years ago. He was he was the root of of that meme. Oh she she He was it was in a like a thread that he was going back and forth with his guy about and it's a whole thing okay, but right. it was it was so funny and i was like yo that's my guy he also Aww. responded to me on twitter what? yeah he did do that one time i think i and remember I, what you're talking about it was it was something about breaking bad yeah but i uh wait this is the guy I think it was like if you could watch one show like fresh yeah 
what would it be? And I said Breaking Bad, I think. Something like that. And he he responded, and I, I, I uh, you know I screenshotted that and threw it in the family group. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. He said, well Ver- done, son. Quote. You finally, you finally. More, more than a verified it. quote. A quote from someone you, you really respect and admire, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, this is this is this is a win, boys. <laughs> um, all right, now I guess we can. I, I've said my piece. I'm good with getting into the into the <laughs> the, the specifics. Dive. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I have something written down for every track. <laughs> I don't, but <laughs> um, I'm gonna start. Off, all right, so uh, we'll just start off with "Cover Me Up." I I will stake my claim that I think this is one of the best love songs ever written. Best love song ever. I ab- like it's so raw and there's so much emotion and every line is like just written so well. Mm. Like he's a guy where like there's a million ways that you can say almost anything and I I he gets in especially in this song. He says it right. He picks the right one every single time. You're telling me like, you're telling me Fetty Wap's Trap Love is less romantic than this? In IMO. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> hot take, hot take, Danny, but I'll let you continue. Like, okay, so it just it it's incredible. Like the amount of I, I think he said like the first time he ever like kind of like threw this on wax, he like he got almost so choked up doing it. He wrote it for his wife before they were like married, oh, dang. but he wrote it for and about her. Uh, I mean, it's just like every single verse you can go back and like listen to it again and again and get a little bit more out of it. But uh, specifically the end of the first verse. Hard on the run, keeps a hand on the gun. You can't trust anyone. I was so sure what I needed was more. Tried to shoot out the sun. Days when we raised, we flew off the page. Such damage. Somebody knew I was meant for someone. Um, he talks about how the first part of the verse basically talks about how like living kind of like recklessly doesn't really do anything. Um, <laughs> days when we raged, we flew off the page. Such damage was done, but I made it through because somebody knew that I was meant for someone. And and it just it starts off just like talking about how he like he made it through the dark times because of this new because someone knew that he was meant for someone Aww. like someone knew that he needed to stick around and that person cared enough for him to help him see through like the shit um his wife though I right mean, yeah uh, his now wife but okay, then okay, okay. just like uh, some sort of significant other. Oh, because uh, she was actually a leading. She was one of the people. Him and his former bandmates were the driving factors. Who were like, "Look, you have got to like shape up, like go to rehab." And um, so yeah, I, I mean the the chorus. So girl, leave your boots by the bed. We ain't leaving this room. Someone needs medical help for the magnolia. It's cold in this house, and I ain't going out to chop wood. So cover me up and know you're enough to use me for good. Uh, 
so girl, leave your boots by the bed. We ain't leaving this room till someone needs medical help or the magnolias bloom. Like, that already is such an excellent poetic way to say, like, we're staying in here literally until, like, the seasons change. Uh, it's cold in this house, and I ain't going out to chop wood, so cover me up and know you're enough to use me for good. Which is, like, such a such a just profoundly, like, heartfelt, like, it's cold, like, we will keep each other the company through this, like, trial and time of, like, you know, hardship. Uh, and know that you're enough to, like, use me for good. Which is, oh my god, I love it so much. Um, yeah, I I never, I've always loved this song, just f- because it it feels so emotionally profound, and I'd always kind of struggled to pull explicit meaning, like what exactly cover me up and know you're enough to use me for good, what exactly that means, and it it feels almost like a like a submission to to another person, like cover me up and know you're enough to use me for good. Like I'm, I'm here for what you need and I trust you enough that you can use me for good. You're not going right. to take advantage of me type deal. Yeah. I, I mean, and it's uh, like down to literally the next verse. He, you know, like he talks about sobering up mm-hmm. and every, like every time he performs the, uh, but I sobered up and I swore off that stuff forever this time. The audience always cheers after that. Put your faith to when I tore off your dress in a rich on high. I sobered up and I swore off that stuff forever this time. The old lovers say I thought it'd be me who helped. And he says, the old lover sing, I thought it'd be me who helped him get home. Like his exes thought it would be him that helped him. But home was a dream, one that I'd never seen till you came along. As in like, I like the other people wanted to help me, but I didn't know that like there was a better side until I like met this new person, which is like, it's just, it's so, there's so much in the entire song. And I, I, it, I don't know. I, I really, I think it's like the rawest love song that at least that I've heard. I don't know about written cause I haven't heard all songs, <laughs> but like in my musical experience, it's just like, I, I love it so much. Yeah. that That's one of the it's most so profound good. lines on the album. And definitely the song that I really enjoy. The one that you said, the, but home was a dream one I'd never seen until you came along. Oh, incredible! That is really sweet. It is. I mean, it's and, and if <laughs> so you watch lonely. it live, what if you see them perform it live? It's it's so good. I mean, later on he he says in the next refrain, uh, he says, "Girl, hang your dress up to dry. We ain't leaving this room till Percy Priest breaks open wide and the river runs through." Percy Priest is a dam in Tennessee. And a, uh, on the stone river and carries this house on the stones like a piece of driftwood. Cover me up and know you're enough. Use me for good. Like, just so much of saying, like, like we are staying through this no matter what. Like, until literally an act of God yes. has to separate us and, like, cause a massive change. Like I didn't just, know... I didn't know that the stones... Was a river. I thought he just meant. I thought like the foundation. Founda- yeah, the foundation oh, of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I looked up the lyrics, I I found that out. That's crazy. Because I read it and I was like, "Carries the house on the stones," and I like clicked on it with like the genius thing and learned about the uh, Stones River, mm-hmm. which runs, uh, like through Nashville and stuff, and that's where they live. There, they have a house out. Yeah. In the outside of Nashville, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I that that song is just like. Every time I listen to it, I'm just like, ah, oh, this is so good. Um, I, I did think it was very nice. Again, it was a little slow mm-hmm. just for my taste. Um, right. As far oh, as a, as far as an opening yeah. song goes, 
Yeah. Um, again, I think it's just all about how I think about songs sometimes too. Like I was going in, yeah. like the last few albums, I've been like pleasantly surprised how like a B, you know, like the first song was and how some other stuff was. So maybe I was like waiting. Yeah, that's not it. this one. Yeah. Maybe if I was like, I was expecting it, which maybe like if I gave it like another chance, like I should anyways, but yeah. 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 But it, um, yeah, and that song actually, it uh, Morgan Wallen, who's like a radio country artist, he covered it and it got big. Mm-hmm. And I went on Twitter as soon as I started seeing people tweet about that. I was like, "Yo, if you like this song, listen to the original. It's it takes it to another level." Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's all Damn I have song, that, for that, that masterpiece of <laughs> songwriting. I did think it was interesting uh, that he he chose to start off the album with that song. It does set yeah. a good tone for for the album, considering a lot of the album's lyrical content and mm-hmm. exploration like the, of the just themes of what's being said. Yeah, mm-hmm. because yeah. because a lot of song, a lot of albums start off energetically, or mm-hmm. or start off with more upbeat songs just to just to keep you keep you interested, grab your interest with with that hook of of that um, of those more upbeat songs, but it it shows that like he he probably even recognized that this was this song was profound enough to to be like yeah this is what i want to lead my like most important work to date with you know yeah I, right, I mean, and right. I, yeah i mean and not only that like this is the song that he chose to open up like this next chapter in his life yeah. of like sobriety and like betterment mm-hmm. like he I, I, I think he has said in interviews that like he loves the music he's made after this, but he still thinks that this is like the crown jewel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he, so he personally thinks this is but his this is his best album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't even necessarily mean like most fun, but he just mm-hmm. means like as far as like just how like as an art piece. Yeah. He, I think I think he said I'm pretty sure I've heard in interviews at least. In the past, he's talked about this is like still like the most important work for him. Oh, um, but yeah, it's just it's yeah, and it's a it's an excellent like it's very slow. You're right, but I do think that like thematically it, it opens up that like all right, this is what this is gonna be. Yeah, like sit down, <laughs> get ready. Yeah, I don't know if I'm honestly like conditioned to even listening to that kind of music, like. Mm-hmm. like as much as i like i know you, i know you told me this was going to be like this kind of album mm-hmm. anyways but i don't know if like that my brain still registers like that you know right it's a it's a process i mean it's it's like anything else it's a skill that you have to you know yeah. acquire yeah, yeah, yeah. like i said i've had like such a leading time of like practice for this album <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I've, I've had like six years sure, sure, of sure, 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 advance sure, notice sure, 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 sure. um yeah, I like Stockholm. Um, I like the bridge section in it. It's like interesting musically, uh, but I think I think that it's probably my least favorite track on the album. Which song? Stockholm. Oh, really? The next one. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. It's just I I don't know. It's it pretty much the entire time I've ever listened to this album. Uh, it took a little while for me to get used to Super Eight. Yeah, um, but I think Stockholm, I like, I really like it, and it's a pretty duet with him and Amanda. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've n- I've never really pulled that much from it. You know, Jamie be like, meh. <laughs> I'm gonna, I still enjoy it. No, yeah, yeah. But I don't really have. If I'm looking holistically at all twelve tracks, it's probably like twelve. Interesting. I don't know that I have a super. Uh super uh what am i trying to say i totally I don't like know. super uh dude i have the word opinionated uh super opinionated mm-hmm. uh opinion on this <laughs> a strong opinion yes i, think I don't think i have a very strong opinion on yeah. this. i did notice um a line that i never really registered while listening to it but that i really liked mm-hmm. when i read it was uh lock me up tied in these shackles i wear tied up the keys in the folds of your hair and the difference with me is I used to not care. Stockholm, let me go. Lock me up, tired of these shackles I wear. Tied up the keys in the folds of your hair. And the difference with me is I used to not care. Stockholm, let me go. But yeah, 
that that uh like you said, there's a million ways to say everything, and he finds ways to say things really beautifully in in pretty yeah, much every song he puts out. The, it's uncanny how good he is at choosing the right way to, like the exact right way uh-huh. and a right moment to say something. But yeah, it's say, saying like "tied up the keys in the folds of your hair" is the perfect way to say, like, like oh, I'm locked in to like I'm following. No, I'm I'm staying here because of this girl. Right. He just says that in yeah. such a more poetic way than just those plain words. No. Yeah, and I mean, in shows and his like like constant revisions in his songwriting process Mm -hmm. like it shows um yeah traveling alone i've always really liked i really love the harmonica in the beginning mountains rough this time of year how just like it starts off with like this is a lonely song, okay? <laughs> uh, I really like the line about um, I know every town worth passing through, but what good does no one do with no one to show it to? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Because I mean, the the whole song is basically <laughs> like a really like it's just a plea for like companionship from someone who's like who's seen all of this like all of these parts of the world and the the country and stuff but like doesn't really have anyone meaningful to to like share that knowledge with and i I think that i don't know it's just an excellent song for a while i thought it was about trucking but then i realized that it doesn't really necessarily have to be about a trucker uh (laughs) and so then i was like oh well maybe it's more about being a lonely musician (laughs) that's crazy that you say that because i i always thought it was about a trucker and it I don't know. I think because he said heart like a rebuilt part. Yeah. And not many people talk about rebuilds except for truckers and like gearheads, I guess. Did you say rebuilt? Rebuilt. Yeah. Like a, like a rebuilt engine. How it like, you kind of revitalize the engine by taking it apart, cleaning it, putting it back together, Uh, but it's not as good as like the original manufacturer. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yeah. It says uh, heart like a rebuilt part. I don't know how much it's got left. How much it's got left. left. Yeah. Yeah, I th- I think it can be specifically applied to trucking, but like you said, it can also be applied to like anyone who's in some sort of traveling position. It seems like why why would he be relating it to truck trucking though? Just for a I don't know. Or... See, that's that that's what I was never sure why, but I just I I think I always. I think because he says like ride so many times and he talks about Ebor city, which is a, a, a town in Florida. Apparently I always thought it was in like Idaho or something. I don't know. Uh, Idaho. and he talks about so high, the street girls wouldn't take my pay, stuff yeah, like that. I and so that. I was just kind of assumed that like connotatively that had to do with like, you know, long distance trucking, but literally nowhere in it does he say like, yeah, I mean, oh, the, the yeah. hook is, I've grown tired of traveling alone, won't you ride with me? But that could be applied to just life as well. Yeah, that could be a, yeah, life yeah, yeah. As well. I, think, I think this song is a great example of um, songs that can be written about scenarios. Like, to me, it... But can be applied to so much more than what they've been written yeah, about. Uh-huh. Even, yeah, like, even the, like, the verses, taking the whole song in context, can be applied specifically to trucking or just someone who is in a traveling position. But if you if you just take the choruses, like they're they're anthemic for anyone who is in a lonely situation. Just I've grown tired of traveling alone. The, repeated, the archetypal repeated. journeyman. Yeah, uh-huh. won't you ride with me? Yeah. Just like yearning for for that connection. That's applicable to to all kinds of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's all I have for traveling alone. So. Uh... Unless you guys have anything, we can we can get right into elephant. <laughs> elephant, the, bro. The you only a split. Yeah, split literally if, track on. It is, man. If I think literally, like when we saw this in concert, it was like after probably, if not at the beginning, at within like the first like three or four lines, it was like the whole. We saw him at uh, the White Oak Amphitheater in Greensboro, and like. Literally, almost everyone was like silent. 
by the end of it, you could hear people start to like sniffle a little bit. Like you were watching a sad part in a movie. Um, because this song is heavy, very heavy, but also excellent. Yeah. I love this song. Um, I mean, it's just, it's such an, I really love how there's like, so you see the title and you're like, what, what, what does that mean? <laughs> and then slowly, like the second or the second part of the verse, he says, and try to ignore the elephant somehow. And you're like, huh, wait a minute. Okay. So what's, what's the elephant? Uh, and it's the elephant in the room. And it's that, uh, no one dies with dignity. We just all try to ignore the elephant and the elephant is death and our mortality. Oh. Um, but it just like I so I love the slow reveal of that. It's an excellent like songwriting strategy. Uh and it, I mean it's a heavy truth, but at the end of the day it's like that's a universal thing that we like I I mean at some point in life you have to reconcile with the fact that like you're the one going through that process, like just you. Um There's there's a line in the song, uh, it, it's it's basically it's about a song that the narrator meets who has cancer and the slow like that's what I thought yeah yeah, yeah it, it, the song object or like the narrative of it is uh you know he starts off she said Andy you're better than your past so the narrator Andy's hanging out with this girl at a bar she said Andy you're better than your past winked at me. Cross legged on a bar stool like nobody sits anymore. She said, Andy, you're taking me home. But I knew she planned to sleep alone. I'd carry her to bed and sweep up the hair from her floor. If I'd fucked her before she got sick. Never hear the end of it. She don't have the spirit for that now. Uh, she said, "You're taking me home, but I knew she planned to sleep alone. I carry her to bed and sweep up the hair from her floor after like shaving her head and stuff because of the chemo. Uh, if I'd fucked her before she got sick, I'd never hear the end of it. Yeah. She don't have the spirit for that now. That's the part that uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the." You go through, you go through. And then, like, later on, he says, uh, when she was drunk, she made cancer jokes, made up her own doctor's notes. But the line is, surrounded by her family and saw that she was dying alone. She said, Andy, you cracked me up. Seagram's in a coffee cup. Sharecropper eyes and the hair almost all gone. She was drunk, she made cancer jokes Made up her own doctor's notes Surrounded by her family I saw that she was dying alone Because at the end of the day, like, you know, when you're the one dying, it's like that's a that's a one-on-one thing that, I mean, and that's that's, it's a very heavy truth, but it's one that we all have to reconcile with. It's like, that's a process that you go through alone, regardless of, you know, who you're surrounded by. It's, you know, that's a one-on-one. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's like, that's, it's such a, it's a haunting line, but it's so good. Yeah. Um, sometimes this is off topic a little bit, but sometimes I think about if I like died, you know, mm-hmm. and like, I don't know. I'm like, like confront. Like, if I had, like, terminal cancer or something, like, how quickly you'd have to come to terms with your mortality yeah. after after only, uh, after, uh, like, like we all think we're going to die, like, let's just say 80. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, but then, like, how, like, how quick you'd have to, like, come to terms with it, you know? If you, like, yeah. and that just is, like, so sad. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, like I'm just gonna like I was just uh, the last thing I ever written is just like the the final verse of it of the song is it's so poignant but um just like for someone going through it with someone else like watching someone go through it it's uh 
I've buried her a thousand times, given up my place in line, but I don't give a damn about that now. There's one thing that's real clear to me. No one dies with dignity. We just try to ignore the elephant somehow. I've buried her a thousand times, given up my place in line, but I don't. There's one thing that's real clear to me No one dies with dignity You just try to ignore the elephant somehow You just try to ignore the elephant somehow You just try to ignore the elephant somehow And then he repeats that a few more times. And that, like, that right there is just, damn, you know? Like, I, I don't have much else to say, but that's just, that's such a heavy, heavy line. Yeah, that's that's one of the most profound statements on the album, along with, yeah. like, cover me up and know you're enough to use me for That's good. the one where you're, when you're a couple drinks in, that's definitely one where you go. You get a little <laughs> choked up, you're like, damn. Yeah, that, the, there's one thing that's real clear to me, no one dies with dignity, that's... Mm-hmm. That that's that's always one that's just heart heart wrenchingly sad. With. Yeah, sticks with you. It's it's just so existential and applicable mm-hmm. to literally every person. Like, yeah, I mean, it's a there's a, two things sure in life: death and taxes. Right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but yeah, Newtonian flute. Thank you. No. Bing, Bingy Frank. <laughs> Bingy Frank line. But yeah, it is. I mean, it's 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 a universally applicable thing, and I th- and I think that's what makes it so like hit so heavy because that's something that literally one hundred percent of people will deal with. Yeah, death is a in one way or another. This is a weird thing coming to terms with you and your uh, younger too. Yeah, because like, is. at what point do you start like actually thinking like an adult and like you know I don't know, right? What age? Again, it's different for everybody. That's but... for future us to figure. <laughs> uh, no, I I thought about it. Yeah, no, I think about it all the time. Um, I used to, and that's why I like sad music, dude. I, I I more just think sad thoughts. Like I used to think about like just as like I, I don't know. It was when I was in bed. I told you like I think too much when I'm in bed. I'm like mm-hmm. I overthink a lot. When I was younger, I would just or sometimes even now, like I'll just my brain goes off on this like weird like 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 side road, and like somehow I start thinking about like how I would react if, like, someone close to me died, and then I just start, like, crying. It's really weird. Is that... Dude, it, it, it sucks. Do you guys ever do that? I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, like... Yeah. I had a... I had a... I had a, a good friend of mine in high school, uh, a freshman year of here for me, but I guess he would have been a junior at ECU, but he, uh, he took his own life. Aww. Um, and, yeah, it's... It's something. It hits you hard. Yeah. You you ask a lot of... I, I don't know if you ask a lot of questions, but there is definitely, like, a lot of, like, existential reflection. Yeah. Where you're like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there, there's even existential reflection for people who have lived a pretty full life. Like, this... Like, this... Um, this song is specifically very applicable to well, it, it's broadly very applicable to death in general, but it's specifically very applicable to anyone who's had cancer, not just a friend or someone yeah. that you might have had, uh, might have wanted to have some sort of romantic relationship with. Like he 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 describes the the minutia and the day to day of it so well, talking about carrying her to bed, sweeping her hair off the floor, yeah. how she doesn't have a voice to sing with now, how she's just trying to enjoy the moments she has left because like her just the liberties of normally living are being taken away from her like trying to ignore the elephant yeah it's just it that's all hook yeah (laughs) it's just i mean because that's what we all do right that's what life's all about is uh living until you don't yeah i was gonna say is living yeah yeah living and not not trying to consider the the fact that you won't be eventually 
Jesus. Yeah, that's a heavy song. It's a really heavy one. And, and I mean, shit, it's what? Three and a half minutes long? And it's there's so much. Um, but I guess at some point we will. Uh, we do have to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Flying Over Water. I, I don't have much to say, but I do. So, Jordan, I figured that this would probably be the first point where if if at all you were like okay this isn't bad cuz there's this is up until this point this is definitely the most like upbeat song yeah um i think it still had a little too much country influence uh yeah and that's what i figured that's like the whole thing i just i figured <laughs> no, like, yeah, I the know, other ones would be like a 2 out of 10 and this would be like a 4 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> um but i really like conceptually i like the concept of um how from like if you look at like an external view and i think it's still applicable now it's like you know we can look strong and well thought out in the in the song he talks about uh from the sky we look so organized and brave yeah as in like you know the the country underneath you know america um but if you take a closer look uh you can see that like it's not that well like if you if you if you choose to take a step further you can see uh in the song he says daddy's little empire built by hands and built by slaves you can kind of from an external view you can see just like a strong unified community and then when you deep when you look deeper you can kind of you see the you know stuff you try to sweep on the people some people try to sweep under the rug and stuff like that and that it's not all it's chalked up to be um and i also really like the solo at the end of it It's a good solo. It's a it's a nice pick me up after uh elephant. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. Um, yeah, I I yeah. wanna say I still didn't, you know. It wasn't uh it didn't stand out to me uh that much mm-hmm. either. But I gotcha. The, I mean the instruments were kinda nice, but yeah. Again, it was still just too much influence. And I guess I, I don't want to – it's just like I really don't like that sound a lot. So – but, I, right. but I'm, I'm trying to like dissect it for like its value, like like the words that he's actually saying and not the music right. also. But like it, it's hard to get past that sometimes. But yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, no, totally. For sure. Um, Nate, do you have anything to add about about that one? Uh, not really. Uh, like I think like you really. said <laughs> – <laughs> like you said about Stockholm, I think I enjoy every song on the album, but I think this is probably my least favorite one. Yeah, it's probably in the in the lower mm-hmm. ones. Like me. if I, I like the solo. Yeah, if if I rank them one to twelve, this would probably be number twelve. But that doesn't mean I don't like it because I still enjoy right. every single song on the album. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like Different Days. Me too. Um, it's I mean the whole song is about like the idea of you know, every, I mean, if you want to look at it at a, at a micro scale, it's, you know, every passing day, you're a different person than the day before. But like in the grand scheme of things, it's like just the whole, the song is about the idea of like transforming as a person mm-hmm. um, and talks about how, you know, like back, you know, 10 years ago, I might've saw, basically the pre-course for everyone is 10 years ago. I might've saw you something different mm-hmm and done something different but those were different days ten years ago I might have seen you dancing in a different light and offered up my help in different ways but those were different days those were different days Um, I love the second verse Uh, had a girl back home and we shared a single bed when I whispered in her ear she believed every word I said and even if she didn't believe she didn't dare give me slack or it was baby I love you get off my goddamn back Uh, the time went by and I left and I left again Jesus loves a sinner but the highway loves a sin I love that line 
My daddy told me, I believe he told me true, that the right thing's always the hardest thing to do. Had a girl back home and we shared a single bed. When I whispered in her ear, she believed every word I said. And if she didn't believe, she didn't dare give me slack. Or it was, baby, I love you, get off of my goddamn back. Time went by and I left and I left again. Jesus loves the sinner, but the highway he loves the sin. My daddy told me, I believe he told me true. That the right thing's always the hardest thing to do. Um Yeah, I just I I love that verse so much. I really love the, um, the first verse where he says, seems like these days you couldn't run away at all. And even if you did, what you got to run away to, just another drunk daddy with a white man's point of view. <laughs> that's just, yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's a savage line, but that's also, I hate to say savage because it's, I feel like that word's almost memed to a point. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Dude, a, freaking savage. It, it's, a, it's a convicting line. It's a fatalistic yeah, yeah, that's that's very very true, and and when you hear it, it if you're conscious of it, it it makes you it makes you even more aware of that fact, and it's uh, right. Yeah. It's like, oh well, guess he's onto something. That's a uh, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think everyone has a has a drunk dad. No. Not, a, not not any of us, right, I don't think, right. but but the the observation of it, it kind of um, that line in itself relates to. He has a song on, I think, on that Nashville sound on the twenty seventeen album called "White Man's World." That um, yeah. that expands on that idea of having a broader perspective than than um, than just a a white perspective of a. Of, that perspective of privilege right. and and that one specifically that's also in um that song he, he basically was motivated to write that song by seeing the state of uh the country we're in and then also um he'd had a daughter a couple years before yeah. and it's basically about like wrestling with how him and amanda can raise that daughter to like be the person that like to maximize potential basically but also wrestling with the fact that they are living in a white man's world mm -hmm. I, sp I guess a better uh, emphasis would be a white man's world true yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean like I said like I mean this this shit was in 2013 mm -hmm. and it's like oh dang still hits I thought it was crazy uh, that in this in this song he has he he makes a rhyme out of benzodiazepine <laughs> that's wild. and that's something he's kind of done for like most of his uh his musical career he and i, I actually i read in an interview one time he uh, he said yeah i've never really he's like i've never really you know like i did coke and shit but i was never into like pills and stuff he just <laughs> he thinks it's neat to like use those like there's a song uh called coding off of um, here we rest that's an excellent song but he's just like yeah it just sounds cooler if you throw in something like that <laughs> later on he talks about clonopin which is like a it's also another prescription medication yep. but yeah he just he'll, he'll kind of throw it out there as like a rhyme and it's like oh okay getting scientific it, it, it paints a better image yeah. like in here it's you can strip in portland from the day you turn 16 you got one thing to sell in benzodiazepine which is i think Dang, that's I'm i think it's like ecstasy Something like yeah. that, yeah. It's some sort of stimulant. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Nick, do you have anything else on different days? Uh, it's one of my favorite songs on the album, but we've said pretty much okay. everything about it. Yeah, I really like it too. It's it's probably in the upper half for me for sure. Um, I really like the next song, which is Live Oak. <laughs> um, it's. It's just, it's really good storytelling. Yeah. Like, it's, I think one of the, like, from starting from, like, one of the first times I heard it, I was like, like, after every line, I was like, okay, what happens next? 
Like I, I was like in, I was invested in the story. There's another song by a guy named I think it's Chris Young, but it's called Down the River, and it's kind of the same way where you're just like, okay, okay, where are we going? Uh, another example would be uh, the night the lights went out in Georgia. That's another really, good one. but it's <laughs> just like, yeah. it's just like the right amount of like backwoods ambiguity someone may or may not have died and it may or may not have been a murder Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like the storytelling is just so good like i love the ambiguity of the end where he just like it it basically starts off the narrator goes south running from the law uh he meets a he meets a girl falls in love with her other like his neighbors start kind of shit talking and behind his back he asks what's going on apparently like the the news of like the shit he did in his past started to come through and then he talked about we robbed a great lakes freighter killed a couple men aboard <laughs> when i tur- when i told her her eyes flickered like the sharp steel of a sword all the things that she'd suspected i'd expected her to fear was the truth that drew her to me when i landed here and like well you couldn't stay alone or on the plains before the war my neighbors took to sliding me i had what for rumors of my wickedness had reached our little town soon she'd heard about the boys I used to hang around we'd robbed a great lakes freighter killed a couple men aboard when I told her her eyes flickered like the sharp steel of a sword all the things that she'd suspected I'd expected her to fear Was the truth that drew her to me when I landed here Me being an outlaw, though she didn't know that, I thought she'd be afraid. Turns out she kind of liked that side of me. Um, and then suddenly he talks about, Well, I carved a cross from live oak and a, and a box from shortleaf pine. Like... Well, I carved a cross from live oak and a box from shortleaf pine and Buried her so deep she'd touched the water table line And picked up what I needed and I headed south again To myself I wonder would I ever find another friend One, I love the specificity <laughs> so much like the fact that he he said like like just is saying like the specific woods that the narrator used to carve her like grave cross and the coffin box that he put her in like i such attention to detail uh and buried her so deep she touched the water table line an excellent way to say that you buried her deep in the ground you could have said i put her six feet under no he said no she touched (laughs) Touched the the water water table table. yeah (laughs) Like, so good. I picked up what I needed, and I headed south again. To myself, I wondered, would I ever find another friend? Did he kill her? I don't know. I don't know, bro. That seems kind of... I'm honestly, people... Actually, you know what? I don't even know. I want to say something. He told her He told her the truth, and then she was dead. Did he kill her? Did she kill herself? Did someone else kill her? Kind of weird. A little sus. That's the thing. But yeah, like the storytelling is just so like literally every line and especially the the chord progression going on behind it. It's like you don't realize it, but it kind of the structure of it makes you like it keeps you interested as well. Yeah. It's it's dynamic enough without overshadowing what's going on lyrically. It's very good. Very good. Yeah, I I really like that one. I've always liked that one. I actually, at one point in time, I learned how to play it, but I haven't practiced. I do not remember. Um, Jamie shred on his guitar. Yeah, because that song shredded. <laughs> uh, and then moving in, moving into the next one, I think that songs that she sang in the shower might be like one of the sadder, like "I miss you" songs I've ever heard. <laughs> Um, it's the, I mean, the whole hook of the song, like, it's an excellent way instead of just saying like, you know, I miss you or I miss this person. It's uh, the, the hook of it is, um, the songs that she sang in the shower, like haunt me basically, because that's such a, like saying, instead of just saying like, I miss the good times with her saying like I, the songs that she sang in the shower, that's such a, like 
an instant conveyance of like the intimacy, the the more intimate parts that come with a relationship. Yeah. Like n- most people don't let just anyone hear them sing in the shower. And so, you know, instead of saying, I miss you, it's saying like, I'm haunted by the songs that you shared in like this very intimate moment. I think that's such a, that's such a heavier, like it just, it conveys so much more feeling than just saying like, I'm sad. I miss this person. Yeah. You know, it, it's saying specifically you miss like the intimacy that came with this positive time in your life. You know? Yeah. That's like, that's similar to maybe a scene you see in a movie or a TV show or, or, something that's described very well here just like you were talking about those those content happy moments sharing that intimacy mm-hmm. with someone it it brings out the emotion in the listener so much more when you when you reference a relatable scenario that um, that people have been through been a part of that that they could also recognize the the right. intimate nature of one of the, I, for some reason the second chorus always gets me in this song the and the songs that she sang in the shower all ring in my ear like wish you were here how I wish you were here and experience robs me of hope that you'll ever return I breathe and I burn I breathe and I burn And the songs that she sang in the shower all ring in my ears Like wish you were here, how I wish you were here And experience robs me of hope that you'll ever return So I breathe and I burn I breathe and I burn And just the just the usage of burn reminds me of the probably going to butcher his name. I've actually never really learned how to properly say it. Ray Lamonton, maybe? Something like yeah. that, yeah. But um, his song, Burn, that's just about mm-hmm. heartbreak, basically. Uh, yeah. Isabel's usage of Burn here reminded me of that, and that song's incredibly sad. And <laughs> uh, yeah. and this song um, is also sad, but has a just a bit more of a a bit of a happier melody maybe not happy melody mm-hmm. but just not one that's sparsely um arranged like it's right there, there's there's substance in this song that doesn't just leave you in like an emotional valley like it's like oh i miss this but it's it's yeah. not like the the deepest darkest you can get you know yeah I've always um I've always liked the the like I guess it's a verse but it's the lines right before that part of the song where he says um I'm stuck on my own in the room by myself looks like I'm here with a guy that I judge worse than anyone <laughs> else so I pace and I pray and I repeat the mantras that might keep me clean for the day yeah. in a room by myself Looks like I'm here with a guy that I judge worse than anyone else. So I pace and I pray and I repeat the mantras that might keep me clean for the day. Which is just like further conveyance of how like in despair the narrator is after this mm-hmm. issue. Um, I also, the, it starts off with a joke where he says on a lark, on a whim, I said, there's two kinds of men in this world and you're neither of them. And his fist cut the smoke and, and he basically got punched. But I actually think that that's a pretty funny joke. Like, kind like, yeah, I don't know. It makes me laugh a <laughs> yeah, little bit. There's two kinds of men in just this to, world and you're neither of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's kind of a funny one liner, yeah. uh, which then sets up ultimately a kind of sadder song. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I always like that song. It's pretty good. Nice, nice and sad. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and the New South Wales, which is the next song, I didn't realize that it was basically like a whole song about getting clean until I like sat down and looked at the lyrics. Mm-hmm. 
thing. I just kind of had thought it was like about two people traveling to like Australia and like starting <laughs> a life, but it's it's more it's more analogous to like getting you know getting free from vices and shit like that. Um, but I've always loved the lines in it. The the sand that they call cocaine costs you twice as much as gold. I did like You'd that be one. better off to drink your coffee mm-hmm. black. And the sand that they call cocaine costs you twice as much as gold. You'd be better off to drink your coffee black. I did like that um, one a lot. Yeah, it's that really good. And, it says it twice. Yeah, in that one and the piss they call tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Even Waylon wouldn't mm-hmm. drink. And the piss they call tequila even way wouldn't drink. Well, I'd rather sip this Listerine I packed. I'd rather sip this Listerine out. <laughs> yeah. It's so that that one always is funny too. Um Yeah. I mean it's good. I, I like that Ooh. song. But it's kinda it normally in my head it would fall into like the middle of the ratings of the album, mm-hmm. probably. Um, I enjoy it. I like those lines. Those are pretty funny. Uh, yeah, that's about all I got with that, though. Me too. Uh, yeah. So, Jordan, what did you think of Super 8? Ah, I have... Uh, I actually have a reference in here that I don't know any of you guys got. <laughs> and I was actually... Okay. Uh, let me... Okay, first, do you mind if I just ask you if you got it? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, go for it. Okay, so there's a part that says, then a big boy busted in, screaming at his girlfriend, waving around a fungo bat, best bass player stepping up, branching a coffee cup, took it in the baby fat. Then a big boy busted in, screaming at his girlfriend, waving around a fungo bat, bass player stepping up. Dude, no. that that God, that song, that line is so funny. I know on Ever. Genius, it told you what it was, but did you know what it was before? I, I didn't either. I, I didn't fungo bet. That. Yeah, I no. didn't know. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh, dude! It was it. Uh, <laughs> dang it! I was gonna see if I could, but I guess if you didn't know before. But so basically, uh, yeah. I mean, you kind of saw it in uh, the description, but basically, yeah. like a fungo bet would be like. You never use it as like an actual bat because mm. like there's like there's like a lot of people don't know this, but like just because and I don't know a lot of rules like in like youth league soccer or whatever, but <laughs> because you're playing with like a ball that can like be traveling so fast at some speeds, like even as the, like a younger kids, uh, depending on how much like torque you get behind it, how much like power, um, bats are only allowed to be made out of like certain materials, so you can't have like mm-hmm. like you could technically make something that. Like every time you hit it, the ball just went like super, super far. But it's like a fung. What a fungo bat is is like it would be for coaches that wanted to like put yeah. less effort into hitting the ball, but still wanted the ball to go like far or whatever. Oh, okay. So uh-huh. it basically like it, it's it's still like a wooden bat, or sometimes there's even metal, and even like younger people would play things called like fungo golf, where basically you'd have like a fungo. But I don't even know. Sometimes it wasn't even with fungos, but um you just get a ball and you like hit it to like a foul pole and the first one's like hit, like you'd like hit the ball and then pick it up and then hit it again so that was just like a cute little memory from uh i was like fungo bat what i haven't heard that in, like, <laughs> yeah dude, this whole song is so funny but i did i did I, this is one of my favorite songs off the album so yeah um that, that, was, that was the biggest reference i had yeah that, 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 I love that. but then after that 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 part in general is just uh, pretty funny about the the boy yelling at his girlfriend with a like just walking in with a baseball bat like what the fuck <laughs> right is that yeah and then the the image of a bass player trying to like protect the girl yeah with a, just a coffee cup and then just taking a bat to the stomach <laughs> <laughs> or I guess is the is the baby fat like I, like the 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 I, fatty part of your lower back. I thought it was maybe the face. Like, people would say that, like, oh, shit, when people say man, you got a little I... baby fat on you, isn't that, nah, what? Well, mm. Is it like the chin? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, actually. I gotta look it up. 
Um, I think it's stomach because because baby fat is usually isn't it kind of referred to as like like guess, post-pregnancy yeah. weight i think oh uh, maybe. yeah it's oh maybe that's it but yeah i always thought it was like a gut shot or like a anyway, like to the back yeah either but way yeah, he's that's, hitting that's him with so a funny aerodynamic bat <laughs> yeah with a little bat um i really like the uh it's like the final verse before he, he does the course again but he says uh, well, they slapped me back to life and they telephoned my wife and they filled me full of Pedialyte. <laughs> saw my guts, saw my glory. It would make a great story if I ever could remember it right. I just, I always think that's so funny. The, the line about, it'd make a great story if only I could remember it, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, it's actually, it's a, the song is very reminiscent of a lot of trucker songs, but especially, especially um, it's a, it's a song called Three Dimes Down, mm. and it's kind of got the same, uh, like quicken pace throughout the whole thing. And it's also another funny, uh, funny song. Yeah. yeah, I, 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 this it the first few times I listened to this album, it really caught me off guard because literally out of nowhere, it's just like what? Yeah, the me hell? too. Um, but it's so funny, like looking at the like listening to the lyrics and like visualizing the story as it goes on is so mm-hmm. funny yeah I, the first couple times i listened to the album I, I i always thought man this is like coming off of what song does it come off of it comes off on of new south wales yeah which is it's not the slowest song in the album but it's but it's also not the fastest yeah, and, and super a just explodes into southern rock yeah i was like man this is i, I felt like it was always so much more different but listening to it again this week and also like the last time i listened to the album i don't know when that was but i've I've had a different opinion of it for a while now i really enjoy to listen mm. to it. yeah it, it's kind of like a fun it's a it's a fun respite uh before Yvette, yeah <laughs> yeah which is that's one of the songs where if you listen to it you kind of go oh, okay and then there are a few lines in it where you're like huh wait but once you look at like the shit that's being said, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. uh, this is another one where it's very heavy, and you could say anything a million different ways, and the ones he chooses to say it in the song are the perfect, uh, perfect phrasings. It's Jordan. Did you was this one of the ones you looked at the lyrics of? Did you like get the meaning of it? Uh, a little bit. Uh, explain it a little bit more. So it's it's a song about a classmate of the narrator who is sexually abused by her dad. Oh. And then the narrator shoots her dad. Oh. Maybe I did not read into that one. As yeah, it's much. it's um Jesus Christ. An excellent song. It's another excellent one, but Jesus, it's heavy. I I mean Could it be the murder from earlier in the album that we were listening to? Or I don't, I don't think so. Think so I'm just kidding. One, I'm kidding. This one is like a <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanted to. I just wanted to relate it. I just wanted no, to relate I got it. You. But he, uh, yeah, it, it starts off talking about uh, a little light from the house on the cul de sac. Yeah. The the line instead of saying like I saw a dad abusing my high school classmate, it's he just says bedroom upstairs. A little light from the house on the cul de sac. Bedroom upstairs. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. That was that that was a good line. Before I even looked at the annotation, yeah. I knew like I was like, okay, this yeah, like, is oh okay, this is a this is this is a double meaning because like family affair right. is just like you know it's going on, yeah. but then an affair is obviously like right i did and like then, I, I, I did like that line mm-hmm. yeah and then instead of saying like i see you at school you're sad verse two i've watched you in class your eyes are cut glass and you stay covered up head to your toe so nobody will notice you like instead of saying you're sad and afraid so you hide you just straight up your right you look like a your eyes are glassed over and you hide from everyone <laughs> uh and then the core the first really course is, i might coming for him well, yeah, and he says, uh, the first course, he says, I might not be a man yet, but that bastard will never be, so I'm cleaning my weather bee. And I sight in my scope, and I hope against hope.
bastard will never be So I'm clean in my weather be I sight in my skull And I hope against hope I hope against hope uh, and the weather and a Weatherby is like a it's like a starter hunting rifle. Oh, pretty much, right? It it's like, like a, a small weather. arms hunting rifle. So. Um, yeah, and then you know it just it builds from there. Like every line, like just saying like that bastard will never be like a man. So I'm cleaning my Weatherby. It's like okay, so he's instead of saying like I got my gun ready, it's just like a it's a it's a much more like poetic way of saying like. I'm getting ready to do something. You're like, oh, what's well, okay? Um, and then the next verse is, your mother seems nice. I don't understand why she won't say anything. It's as if she can't see who we turned out to be. Um, and then the next verse is really where it it hits, where he says, uh, and I might. He once again he says, I might not be a man yet, but your father will never be. So then you're like, okay, so it's the dad, like, you know, doing shit to this girl. Uh, so I load up my Weatherby and I let out my breath and I couple with death, which is like, I might not be a man yet. Your father will never be. So I load up my Weatherby and I let I couple with death. I couple with death. You know, when you're shooting a target, you exhale as you pull the trigger. Yeah. When I when um, I first read that second chorus, and I read, I let out my breath. I I literally stopped and I was like, wait, how have I never noticed this when I listen to this song? And then I read, and I couple with death, and immediately. Yeah the whole song took on a different perspective. It took on a new like, weight. Oh, he just shot someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a little more and then, and then from there it goes into like an instrumental break where it's basically, it's like, he's saying like, all right, now let that soak a little bit, <laughs> let it sizzle. And then the final verse is, I saw your father last night and in the window, the light made a silhouette. I saw him hold you that way. He won't hold you anymore. He won't hold you that way anymore. Yvette. What? Telling like his high school classmate, like I shot your abusive father yesterday. Oh, but so Yvette is the main the, character. Whatever. The girl yeah. being like okay, okay, abused. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. it's just I was it, confused if that was a name or something because I I don't think I've yeah. ever heard the name oh, yeah. Yvette mm-hmm. before. But yeah, it's not common. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of any. But yeah, it's yeah. I mean, just what a like what a way to say that. Like instead of saying. And then I shot them. I let out my breath and I couple with death. Like, what a way to say, like, my bre- yeah, that actually is a really good one. Killing someone, like taking a life. Like, I couple with death. Damn, it's crazy. Yeah, but it's and that's a really good one. But that's definitely one of the ones where it's really easy to not, uh, to not catch what's going on until you you catch like the one line. Like, yeah, you hear like I let out my breath and I couple with death. You're like, hey, wait a minute, I might need to. I need to give this a a repeat and see what what's going what's going on here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really good though. It's just there, there's it's so poetic. So many of those lines, just incredible ways to write. Just such such. It's not even like big words. It's just the perfect syntax and uh, what's the whatever the the word choice is. Diction? I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Diction, diction is good. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's so good. Every one of these you could take to like a high school English class, English class for like bringing a song day and like take a look at it. Yes. Um, I heard what you said. Sorry, you could have yes. like half a second there. <laughs> oh, did I really? Oh yeah, my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's you could oh this whole all of his writing you could you could take a microscope at and it would be enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so then I guess we can just round it out by talking about relatively easy. 
Um, yeah, I like it. I like this song a lot too. It's one of my favorites on the album. It's one that I've always loved, and it might be because of the melody or I love the message of it. One of my favorite. I, I've talked about Dawes like two or three times on probably more than that on this yeah. po- podcast, even though we've never done a Dawes album. But they're one of my favorite bands, and they have a song called "Things Happen" that has a very similar message, like mm-hmm. like things happen, like um, things happen. That's all they ever do is the hook of that song, and the hook of this song is like there's not a there's not one hook, but our kind has had it relatively easy. Um, our lives have both been relatively easy. My angry heart beats relatively easy. Like he he makes all kinds of comparisons. To, to people who are far away who have lives much worse than ours and also people just next door. He says, uh, um, still compared to those a stone's throw away from you, our lives have both been relatively easy. Also, just people like next door, people just down the street have lives that are that are just like insanely sad compared to the one you currently live like a like consider that perspective when you're when you feel sad about like minor things in your life and don't not really diminish your own sadness but recognize the the state that you're in and recognize that you're not going through anything extremely terrible you'll be able to make it through what you're going through but somebody else might be going through something like catastrophically life-changing you know yeah and uh yeah and and so that's that's kind of what i always had is like the the just the meaning of the song but then you know looking a little bit further into it i, I you can kind of also see that there's an underlying there's that message but then there's also like an another underlying thing that's kind of like it's like you see the the building of like kind of more of like a depression like an undercurrent of like depressive feelings and how it can change um like shift from uh just a long day to then like you know someone overdoses and then or it could drive you to like like a like someone goes on like a shooting spree out of their window um so there's also kind of like a second meaning there where it it can kind of talk about like you know him as a person being like yeah i i also kind of like i get these feelings too um but I, I've always, one thing that always, especially after, um, when I talked about earlier about the, the friend I had who, uh, took his life, um, it's always stuck with me, the lines, um, this, it's the second, I guess it's kind of verse. I lost a good friend, Christmas time when folks go off the deep. Took the kids and you took on a pen enough to kill a man of twice his size. Not for me to understand. Remember him when he was still a proud man. A vandal smile, a baseball in his right hand. Nothing but the blue sky in his. Uh, he says i lost a good friend christmas time when folks go off the deep end his woman took the kids and he took clonopin enough to kill a man twice his size um so that's like he had a friend who a good friend who killed himself like he overdosed because he was depressed because his wife um left him and took his kids and stuff um and he kind of lost it but then uh, he says, not for me to understand, remember him when he was still a proud man, a vandal smile, a baseball in his right hand, nothing but the blue sky in his eyes. Um, just talking about how, like, it is not necessarily obvious with everyone that it happens with. Like, I mean, the person I knew, like, he um, he came out his senior year and of high school and he, and basically his dad uh, was a Baptist preacher and like just completely disowned him and stuff. And so he went through like a rough patch there, but then like when he went to like ECU, you know, he went into the music program, which was, he was incredibly gifted, like 
the best musician that I personally have ever met. Just knew like how to play so many instruments and he was like drum major senior year and he was just he was so passionate about just music and everything about it like he lived and breathed you know like transposing modern songs into like scores and stuff and so like and he went to ECU for like music ed and then uh, like I kind of you know I kind of lost touch with him just because like we were good friends in high school but not enough to like like we didn't really talk that much outside of high school yeah um so he wasn't like someone that I regularly kept up with but he like you know he went to ECU and by all accounts from like us who were still at you know the high school or went to like different colleges and kind of didn't really talk to him that much it, by all you know all of us it, it just seemed like he was happy and doing like way better and was like with like made good new friends and like his mom kind of reconciled with him she like left his dad and they kind of like reconciled but then just out of nowhere i got a call from uh one of my friends here and she said that that he had uh he had taken his life um over labor day weekend um while he was back home and it just kind of you know i mean it really is like it's it's kind of it said so much that i feel like some people might think it's like a cliche thing but i mean it's it's just the truth that like you you definitely do not always see um how bad someone else's psyche is going i know um and we also get comfortable with the fact that like we, we take for granted sometimes how often we see each other, you know, or like yeah. how easy it is to see each other. Like, again, technically, I, I could get in a car crash, like coming over to your guy's yeah. apartment and just right. like, like that, 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 that's why I've learned to value like people, I guess. And like, mm-hmm. I don't know, that's, that, that's one thing. And like, again, after you've like, you know how people like watch a movie about it and they're like, oh yeah, like this is so important. And then we just kind of go back to like doing what we normally do yeah, it's like it's like you change for what like a week yeah maybe maybe weeks, a week a month if you're lucky which is like, which which is why i try to like just keep it in my like daily routine to do stuff like yeah. that again i i probably haven't seen as many people as i should and it, again it's you have to balance it with just like daily life sometimes yeah. but right it's just not like taking people for granted i guess mm-hmm. and I, that's something Liv- i try not living to with intention yeah 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 not being, not being a, not being a passenger. No, 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 no. You know, or not, not like that, and just not making people feel bad about like anything they're doing. You know, yeah. Because there's already so much insecurity that like so many people go through. Like, I, like I, I literally told myself like so long ago, like, what's the point of like making fun? Like, like, and we can like poke fun with each other, but like, right. What's the point of like? It's usually like it was more of like a high school thing if people would just like see somebody, you know, and like the whole like bullying or whatever goes on in high school it's like like th- th- there's a difference between like joking around with your friends and like actually like oh right and, and actually I, like you know making fun of someone for something that makes them them i mean it's one of my favorite quotes is uh in i think it was in an interview jimmy Hendricks gave but he said you know i'm the one that has to die at the end of my life so let me live it how I'm going to live it. And I just, that's, that's something that just sticks with me. Cause it's like, yeah, like, you know, no one makes it out alive. So do what you want while you're yeah. here. As long as it, you know, w- with the caveat of like, you know, doesn't negatively hurt or harm other people or beings and all mm-hmm. of that. But like, apart from like, as long as it's good and not harming anyone else, dude, go nuts. Like, you know, like just, just go for it, cause, cause, why, like, why the hell yeah. not? You know. No, I got you. That, that's why I still am insecure about plugging anything that I do in my free time, even though I enjoy it. I'm just so afraid of like people. Uh, yeah. And that's something just I just need to get over in, in in at some point. But again, it's still really hard for me. I don't know why, but. Yeah, but I mean, and it's, yeah, I mean that's just it. I don't really know what else to say other than like, that's just like a, I think an excellent thing to like a mantra to live by. Yeah. That's good. Do what makes you happy while you can, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's a good note to end on too. Yeah. I mean, really like I, that's, I guess that's all I had written for this <laughs> album. 
Yeah, I know it's a lot, but like Nick, did you have anything else? Yeah. I love this so much. I'm done. I said, did you have anything else? Because I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done too. All right. Okay. Then uh, I guess I guess we'll uh, we'll rate it. Um, I guess I'll go, and then Nick, and then Jordan, you go because you're yep. gonna announce next week's episode. Um, this is an easy ten. <laughs> if I could give it higher, I would. It is. It is literally like top three albums of all time for Dang. me. I love it so much. Um, yeah, and I, I there's nothing more I can say. I'll just leave it at that. I'll give it. I'll give it a nine point five, like I gave Witness last week, because. It has everything I see that that I could see in a ten, but it doesn't quite scratch the personal itch for me like some other albums do. Mm-hmm. So nine and a half for I sure. Gotcha. I gotcha. Jordan, what's your uh, what's your what's your numerical rating? I was gonna give it a three, but then after us talking about it so much, I'll give it a four. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry to do this album like that. I, I don't. <laughs> no, we we know like, it's, we know it's not your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, I honestly, it's I was literally just, like it's literally just because of the music. Because like music is a right. great deal. Like a hundred percent, I know. Like the it was heartfelt and like it, it covered mm-hmm. a lot of deep topics. It's just like the music, like just purely me based on listening to it again. It's just the music isn't what gets me, you know. Right. I gotcha. Um, so then, sound and color is still number one. <laughs> Well, I guess Sound and Color and Man on the Moon are tied for number one we'll at eight see. and a half. Sound and- but then this is tied. Yeah, because uh, me and Nick gave it a 10 and you gave it a five and a half. Um, Wait, which album was that again? Who, who? That was the Alabama Shakes one. I gave that a five. Oh, yeah, I did. Sometimes I'm like. Um, yeah, so it's Cuddy and that are tied for one. But then this is tied for second place with Dude, Coming sorry. Home, Rage, and RKS is out. Feel good about that. I that's better than I thought it would be. I really thought it was going to be lower. Um, yeah, and then it's and then in third is yay, <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So then, what are we going to be listening to next week, Jarden? Um, oh gosh, which one is it again? How does it how does it go again? Huh. <laughs> It go Holly Berry, Hallelujah. No way. Oh, we're listening to. I think I want to listen to Good Kid, Mad no City. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> because I've honestly, and this is kind of sad to admit, I think I've only listened to like three songs off that album ever. Oh, I, I've never even listened to this You're song. For a good one. I know, I know. That's why. I, that's, that's why. And it's like, it's like albums where I have good songs off of it, and then I just never listen to the album, and then like I hear another song off of it, and I'm like, oh, that's that's awesome and then i still don't listen to the whole album after that i'm yeah. just like bro um are we doing the uh all right all like right. the standard version or the deluxe uh, version? Yeah. let me let me see real quick so i'll tell you the deluxe version the narrative ends in the regular yeah, we, version, we should and then the deluxe version has a few good bonus yeah. tracks but if you're looking at it straight up from the narrative concept of it, it's just what should what should what, and the what you, the, what the deluxe say? version is a total of an hour and a half long. Yeah, it adds okay. It adds another what like six or seven yeah. tracks. So we should we should just do the regular well, one then. I, the regular one wraps up thematically and has like I'd say I think the regular one would be fine. What do you think, Jane? Yeah, I think the regular would be fine because, like you like said, it wraps up the matter. Yeah, yeah. There's it some, ends with Compton, There's some right? good ones. No, it good ends one. with uh, Sing About Me, I'm Dying a Third. No, no, it, it ends with Compton. The original one does. Yeah. Does it end with Compton? Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the track list and it says like one CD and then two CDs. So I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I guess all of them actually say bonus track. Um, so I should have just known that, but... Um. Yeah, I mean, Black Boy Fly, Black, Black Boy Fly is good, um, and the rest of it is good, but you're not missing too much with Now or Never Collect Calls. I got I you. Bitch Don't Kill My um, Vibe remix, though, with Jay Zebra? Sorry. I was... <laughs> we'll, we'll check it out. Yeah, so we're going to do the regular version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh, Ooh. I'm excited. Because it go, holla, baby. Good lord. Holla, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Big boys is dummy. What you doing? Choosing. Everybody comes back to shoot. All right. So then, 
adjust my outro notes so that I don't. One run of gun. <laughs> Very quickly, I'll just start it off Wait. since we're running relatively long. Yeah, uh, I listened I to say. Bahamas, Sturgill, Revenge of the Dreamers 3, Spilligen. Interesting. And, uh, wow. Nick. An indie comedy absurdist podcast called This is Branchburg a lot this week. Interesting. You listened to Revenge of the Dreamers 3 and Spill- Spillville? <laughs> yeah. Uh, both those. Uh, I really like Spillegen. That, that's a really good album. And Revenge of the Dreamers Wait, 3, I was trying to get back into it. Yeah, Spilligion is There's the a, um, the album Spillage. name for Spillage Village's new album. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, that's why I assumed. Yeah, but yeah. but any, anyone else, take it away. Oh, yeah, sorry. I've been listening to Money Trees, like, so much. Yeah, that's why you. I wanted to listen to this song. Um, again, Meet the Woo 2. <laughs> dude, that's my album, dude. Legendary. I could not... It's the best. Oh, it's 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 my favorite album of all time. I should have given it a ten. I'm so sad. <laughs> but um, uh, there's a song called "Don't Die" by Killer Mike. It's oh, okay, good. okay. Um, and I actually discovered that song a while ago before even you guys introduced. Well, I knew of RTJ, but I didn't like know know them at all. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever like listen to a song, but mm-hmm. like I, I I listened to this song. It was actually I think during the. Uh, sadly, it's when. Uh, Everything was happening back in May with like the George Floyd uh-huh. protests and yeah. stuff, and Spotify did a uh, like a very political themed uh, playlist, okay. and I found yeah. a couple songs on there, and that was that was one of them. But yeah, uh, I don't think there's nice. anything else. Maybe a couple songs here and there, but nothing nothing too crazy. Okay, um, for me, been listening to Southeastern a lot again because I love it. Uh, I also just kind of like was going through and just listening to his past catalog as well, just because I was like in that mood. Um Yeah, and then some like black keys and stuff. A little bit of St. Paul and the Broken Bones, but nothing too crazy. Um yeah. Alright, cool. So then I guess I'll hit it with the outro. Um we just wanted to say thanks again for listening this week. Uh, remember to tune in next week where we're going to be taking a look at Good Kid Mad City the standard edition by Kendrick Lamar Uh, be sure to give it a listen or two so you can kind of have your own thoughts and you know join in the discussion in your own head Uh, you know feel free to either leave a comment about your thoughts on this week's album on YouTube or you can also tweet them at us we're on Twitter at at listen up pod and that account as well as our personal handles will be in the description of wherever you found this episode um But for now, we'll catch you next week, and remember to listen up.